In this video, I'd like to look at a four bit adder subtractor. So I have here four full adders. So the, the full adder takes care of one position. Let's say this is the two's place here. And then in the purple, we have the carry out of the previous place coming in to be the carry in of the next place. So that is making this like the ones place, the twos place, the fours place. And the for the sum, we are taking this ones place to the right end of the uh, seven segment display. And I have a set of uh, switches A, B, C, D coming in here in red, and they are the A's. And so this first switch A goes into the A of the ones place, and also the uh, right-hand side of this first seven-segment display. So this was going to display my number A. And then I have a second set of four switches that are coming in with blue wire. And those are being uh, sent to the uh, second display, starting on the, the ones that is going on to the second display. And now I want to explain uh, how this is a subtractor. So I want to uh, explain the presence of this excluded or. I'm going to jump over to uh, this slide on the twos complement. So if I am using a finite number of bits, in this case four, to represent a number, then I have available a way of uh, making a negative number called the twos complement procedure. It has two steps. You exchange ones and zeros, and then you add a one to the ones place. So let's say I had, uh, in this case, five, and I exchanged one and zeros. So zero, one, zero, one became one, zero, one, zero. And then I added a one to the ones place. So I would get one, oh, one, one. And then here is that addition. So in the ones place, one and one was the sum was zero and I carried a one and one and zero and one was zero and I carried a one and one and one and zero was zero and I carried a one and one and zero and one was zero and I carried a one to my place and doesn't exist. So that's why I have it here in uh, parentheses. This, this position doesn't even exist because I'm only doing four bits. And so down here, we see that I got a sum. When I added this original number of five plus this number that I uh, created from the two's complement, then of the four bits I actually have are zero. So I've created uh, a number uh, that I can both think of as uh, down here. Sorry, this number I can think of as minus five. And here I'm just doing the same thing with four. Uh, again, exchange one and zero, so zero, one, zero, zero becomes one, zero, one, one. And then I add a one to the ones place. In this case, adding that one results in some carries. So one, zero, one, one plus one becomes one, one, zero, zero. So here's the original number four. Here's the number that we've constructed with the two's complement, presumably minus four. And then here's the check that it does indeed for those four bits lead to zero, 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 zero. The ones place and the twos place, no carry from the ones place, zero, 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 zero in the twos place and no carry. And in the fours place, I have a zero and a one and a one. That's a zero in the fours place and a carry to the eights place. And the one and the zero and the one in the eights place are zero and then a carry to the place that I don't have. So the sum, again, was all zeros in the four places I'm considering. Okay, so that's the two's complement. Then over here, I take my a, an input B, which could be zero or one, and I'm going to introduce a new input. And if that new input is zero, and I'm going to, I'm going to use this uh, plus with a circle to represent the excluded or. So if I take some new input and excluded or, it with B and the new input is zero, then zero excluded over zero is zero, and zero excluded all of one is one. And so if I have a new input and excluded or it with a B and that, but that new input is zero, then I get B. 
Whereas if again, if I do the same thing, but this time the new input is a one, then one and excluded or with zero is one and one excluded or with one is zero. So if I have a new input and I excluded or with B and the new input is a one, then I get the inverted B, I get the inverse of B, or I'm going to call it B prime. So that is telling me here the role of these excluded ors, that I have a new input down here I called S, which is going to tell me whether I'm adding or subtracting. It is when it is a one, then I'm going to get the inverse of B. I'm doing that for all of my inputs. So that is the exchanging ones and zeros, the one step in the two's complement procedure. There was one more step in the two's complement procedure. The second step was to add a one in the one's place. And we happen to have here in the one's place, the full adder has a carry in just waiting for us to also bring new from that new input. And so now, so this is an adder subtractor. I'm going to uh, turn it on. And right now I am, the S is high, so I'm subtracting. My input up here was, D was the highest, the most significant, or the sign bit in this case. So I'm putting in uh, 0, 1, 0, 1, that was a 5. I'm putting here for the number B, I'm pulling off B before it gets to the excluded ors. So it is the number before I am applying the two's complement to it. And so I have uh, low, low, high, low. So that was this two. And then it is going to be the excluded ors. And so it, it is uh, inverting this two. And so I have five plus a minus two, which is, or five minus two, which is then the three. If I were to flip that switch S, then it is addition and five plus two is seven. Okay, now I'd like to look at one more thing and that is the uh, overflow. What would happen? What is the sort of acceptable range of these numbers? And what what would an indicator look like to uh, to indicate that a problem had occurred? Okay, so here is um, an indication of two possible problems. I'm adding the range of my numbers. If I have uh, four bits. That is uh, two to the fourth possibility, two to the fourth combinations or 16 combinations. And I sort of split them almost evenly between positive numbers and negative numbers, but I like zero. So I'm going to have one more negative number. So I'm going to go from minus eight to seven. And then if my, I'm going to say, I'm not going to worry about subtraction. Uh, the problem really is with the, the, there's a negation of a number if I'm subtracting. And then I have an adder, so I'm going to worry mainly about what, what's happening with the adder. And so two, two scenarios arise. Uh, one is if I add two positive numbers and end up with a negative number, and the other scenario is if I add two negative numbers and end up with a positive number. So here is uh, here I am adding five. A is five and B is four. And... I get here in the fours place one and one was zero carry a one into the into the I'm calling it here the eights place but I really I should probably if I'm referring to this as uh, signed numbers so I should maybe call this the instead of the eights place the, the sign bit but uh, so that gets carried over and then I end up with a, a one in that position so I added. My, my positive numbers begin with a zero. And so I added two positives and ended up with a negative. So that's a problem that's taking me outside of my range. My range goes from minus eight to, to seven and five plus four takes me outside of that range. Uh, down here, uh, this was uh, minus three and minus six. 
And uh, that also takes me out of my range in the other end, where that should not be zero, but it's nine, but that's also out of my range. And so here we see in this column, one with no carry, in this case, one with no carry, in this case, one with no carry. And then in this last case, uh, there was a carry one and one with zero with a carry to the one. And so here we added two negative numbers, negative numbers in this, uh, when representing sign numbers, the negative numbers begin with one, and I added two negative numbers and ended up with zero. So that's the signature of the overflow problem. Okay, so now one possible approach here is to focus here on A, B, and sigma and say when A and B are zero and sigma is one, that is an indication uh, of this uh, problem, this overflow problem, or if it's alternatively, if it's uh, a is one and B is one and sigma is zero. So I could work with A, B, and sigma and generate a, a overflow indicator. Um, but it's sort of, if you were to say Google it in this day and age, then that's not what you would normally find. What you would find is working with these two, uh, the carry, uh, the carry in and out of the last spot. So the way that you add two positives and get a negative is so there was some carry in to this position and but these were both positive numbers so there is no carry out so that is one indicator works you know focusing instead of on a b and sigma and focusing on the carries then if you carry in but don't carry out that's an indicator that you added two positives and got a negative. Carry in is then turning the positives into negative. And then down here, if you were to add, have these two ones in the sign bit, and so you had two negative numbers and ended up with a positive number, so that comes when you have no carry in, but you will end up with a carry out. So the, the answer you'll find when Googling is that if you excluded or in that in that sort of last full adder, if you excluded or the uh, carry in and carry out, that is an overflow indicator. So that's what I could do here. Um, grab under Miss Digital, well, uh, exclude or, there's an excluded or, and I could have the carry in, which is this uh, purple, and the carry out, which is this, this, and then to some uh, probe. And then here I am, I turn it on and adding five and seven is no problem, but adding uh, five and four we said was. So if I take the one down and the two up, now I'm adding five and four and getting nine, which looks good, except we are dealing with sign numbers here and our sign numbers go from minus eight to seven. And so adding five and four, uh, is really giving, this looks like nine to us, but it's really some negative number. And so we are indicating that with this overflow indicator here. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you. Thanks for your attention.